Hello, book nerds. Welcome to Bookshelf Bunny. I'm Kim, and today we'll be doing October's wrap up. Hey guys, so October was a pretty good reading month for me. I did not get anywhere near finishing all of the books in my spooky TBR. In fact, I deviated quite a bit. <laughs> but I did read some. Um, the books that I read in October are White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This was a haunted house-esque story. Um, there's a twist in it that I don't want to ruin for you. It was a great book. I really enjoyed it. Um, the only thing that I had was it didn't feel quite as spooky as maybe I would have liked. The intensity wasn't there. Um, there was a part of the book, our main character, she suffers from like a bed bug phobia because of an experience in her youth. And I can relate to that. Oh my God, I had a bed bug scare a few years ago. My brother traveled a lot for his job and <laughs> he brought home some little critters. Luckily, they didn't get into my space in the basement, but we had to do like heat treating and bagging and it was just a nightmare to make darn sure they didn't get here and that they died upstairs. <laughs> Everything about it was horrifying. So I related to her. <laughs> A very real level with her bed bug fear. So that was the thing that stuck out to me the most in this book. I gave um, this book a four out of five. I also read Devil's Line Volume 2, the second installment in this manga series. Manga? Manga? I'll never know. <laughs> and it's really good. It picks up where the other one left off. Um, I gave this one a four out of five and it follows our main character as they continue to come to grips with his half vampirism condition and our main heroine as she continues to fall in love with this dangerous half vampire. And this is where I kind of deviated. This isn't a spooky book. I read Gilded Ones. I gave it a four out of five. It was a good story. I really enjoyed it. It's a fantasy story about a society that, it's a similar society in that they expect girls to dress and act and speak and be a certain way. And they're overly scrutinized and it's very religious. Uh, they have a purity ritual when they reach 16 years old to see if they have gold blood. And of course our main character does. And if you do, you are impure and the descendant of demons. So I really enjoyed this. This was a four out of five. I would recommend it. I also read Water Shift Down, which I gave a five out of five naturally. Can you believe I've never read this book? I also didn't really watch the TV show when I was a kid. <laughs> But as a funny mom, I felt like it was time to finally pick this up. And this is such a good story. I love it so much. Uh, this person, this author, he obviously knew rabbits. <laughs> he describes some of their mannerisms and he makes them very human seeming as personalities, but he keeps those mannerisms as very rabbit. And it was so good. It's a great story. This one was actually from my spooky TBR. I read Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Really good story. It kind of pulled from a Stephen King a little bit and they made a couple of references and Easter eggs. Um, I understand he also referenced other books in part of his larger universe, uh, Joe Hill's own universe as well. Um, it's a book about people who have an ability they, some of these people can utilize a tool and allows them to travel on hidden roads of the imagination. And some people do this for good. Our main character uses her ability to find lost things, but our villain uses this ability, uses this ability to drive children to Christmas land. And in the, during the journey, he essentially sucks their youth from them. So really good story, definitely recommend it. I don't really wanna see much more lest I ruin it for you. So you're just gonna to have to pick it up. 
I give this one a five out of five. I also read Hide and Seek by Jack Ketchum, and this was an audiobook listen for me. I enjoyed it. It was a spooky story, kind of haunted mansion type feel to it. Um, but it also has a twist, an unexpected twist. You go through most of the book feeling very supernatural and then, but I won't ruin it for you. You'll just have to read it. I gave this one a three out of five only because it wasn't quite as spooky as I had hoped. I also read The Taste Beneath and guys, this is a really good read. This was on my spooky TBR. Um, I picked it up, I chose it for October because the book starts off in autumn and it takes place kind of post-apocalyptic. There's been a terrible war which has tanked economies across the world, causing everyone to sort of fend for themselves to survive and our main character Ryan and his community which have taken over a uh, vineyard and have created a really self-sustained ecosystem where they all get along really well and they're able to take care of basic needs. But then this outside group, because there's always an outside group, comes along with nefarious plans. And trust me, their plans are nefarious. There is nothing more terrifying <laughs> than what people are capable of. So this was a great book. I gave it a five out of five. Definitely check it out and keep an eye out for the sequel, which is going to be released in 2023. The last book that I've read was Trick or Treat Murder. This is a cozy mystery. I don't really read a lot of cozy mysteries. I prefer the spooky supernatural personally, but in terms of a murder mystery, this was a fun, light little read. It had great autumn vibes and I enjoyed it. Um, I gave it a 3 out of 5 only because I just wasn't a big fan of the main character. She just kind of struck me as a little bigoted <laughs> and it bothered me. She was body shaming characters and social class shaming characters and that didn't sit well with me. Um, so her character and my character would not get along in real life. <laughs> But the story overall it was a nice cozy read with great fall vibes. And that's what I read in October. So yeah, I deviated quite a bit from what I had originally hoped to read. <laughs> but it was a good reading month. Um, and again, check this out. So good. Really enjoyed it. I don't know if I showed you, but I have the signed copy. So exciting. I'm going to keep this one on my shelf. Also, November, which has just started, is NaNoWriMo. And if you'll recall from my last writing update, I'm being kind of a NaNoWriMo rebel in that I'm not starting a new project and I'm not really making my goal of reaching 50,000 words. Instead, my goal is to finish my second draft of my existing novel because I am so behind from where I wanted to be. <laughs> so behind. I kind of took um, I kind of took October off because I was hitting a wall and I just needed some time away from it. So I'm coming at it with fresh eyes for NaNoWriMo and I'm gonna hammer out my second draft. It's gonna be great. I'm so excited. If you don't follow me on the NaNoWriMo website, you can find me there. My username is Kim Bunny with an E-H. <laughs> And in other writing update, I entered a story into a contest that has two parts. One part of the contest is your traditional judges panel, but the other part is a popular vote panel. And guys, I've felt the love. I have 12 votes on my story already, and I am so thankful for you guys reading my story. Ah, I love it. You're the best. And if, you, I have until November 30th, this first round of voting goes until the end of November. And if I make it into the top 25, you guys, I'll have another voting period in which please read and vote for my story. <laughs> and if I pass that voting period, there will be a final round. 
So cross your fingers. Hopefully I make it past this first round. And if I don't, that's okay. It's been fun getting my work out there. And I talk a lot about writing, so I felt like it's kind of neat for people to kind of get a taste for my actual writing, <laughs> see what kind of things I write and who I am as a writer through a piece of my work. So that's been fun. So even if I don't win, I like getting my work out there for you guys to see. And I would welcome your constructive criticism. I noticed after I uploaded it, some uh, errors that, uh, continuity errors <laughs> that I wish I had caught, but I mean, yeah, it is what it is. And I don't think they take away from the story too much. If any of you have even noticed them, <laughs> unless it's just a me thing being hypercritical as is the way of the writer. So I would love your feedback on my story. If you've read it, feel free to comment in this video what you thought. If you have suggestions for improvement, I'm always open to that as well. Or feel free to private message me through Facebook or my Instagram account. And of course, there's my email, bookshelffunny.blog at gmail.com. Welcome your feedback and your thoughts. Absolutely. So again, keep an eye out for the next voting round. <laughs> Hopefully I make it through. <laughs> okay, book nerds, that's all I've got for you today. I'm going to be spending most of my November hammering out my story, so I haven't really put together a TBR for November, but I will be reading throughout. I've got a couple of books on the go already, and I will share with you what I did manage to read at the end of the month. Okay, book nerds, that's all I've got for you. As always, happy reading.